My background as an artist goes back about 30 years of studio practice and about 20 years of teaching. And my own art, I've worked in a wide variety of media, ranging from tattooing to art conservation. Art brings a lot of opportunities to create in different modes. Uh, I'm primarily known as a classical realist oil painter and drawer, but I began my career as an abstractionist. So my art background is varied, uh, ranging again from stained glass to commercial art to fine art. So I feel that you know, being able to jury a show where there's a wide variety, like the Canton Show here, of art making media is exciting to me and also feels really at home to me. So what is essential for my own creative process is to facilitate art making for others. So bringing that into the process of during the show I think was helpful. So there's a really impressive range of themes and subject matter that I saw in the work that was submitted. Uh, some of it, you know, was very narrative driven. Some of it was very aesthetic driven. Uh, you know, it shows the broad range of diversity that, you know, the community uh, embodied in what they submitted. Well, I know this is the first year of doing this in person since COVID. And I would imagine much of the work is what people did when they were processing either the grief, the isolation, or the sort of internal explorations that people you know, found themselves doing. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's many specifically COVID-directed pieces in it, but I think that you see um, sort of the internal exploration as people sort of explored internally rather than externally for those years. So when I jury, I usually look for three criteria. Uh, technical skill or sort of deftness in the chosen media, uh, personal voice and creative, vo uh, creative vision, you know. So personal voice meaning that someone has developed a style, a way of thinking about either media or composition that is distinct to them and creativity being sort of what we were talking about in terms of theme, if there's a theme or novel design and if it's not a thematic based piece. I jury backwards from how I know a lot of other jurors jury. So I never remove pieces from a show. So I start off you know, looking at the entirety of the work several times. And then what I do is I go through a series of prioritizing pieces, you know, pieces that I feel have some exemplary quality or that, you know, hit those three criteria in a really strong way and that I feel passionate that people see. So there's never pieces that are removed, you know, it's more of a process of going through and prioritizing each piece. So what speaks to me when jury in a show is not only the three criteria, but you know how the artist you know, manifests those three skills uniquely. You know, like I said, like there's a lot of really great work that didn't make it on the wall, and it's not that it doesn't deserve to be on the wall. You know, they're like juryin is a very difficult task because you know you know when you go in there's going to be really really worthwhile pieces that either aren't on the wall or that don't receive awards and you know my hope is that those artists continue to create so each of the pieces that received an award received an award because I wanted to draw special attention to either an exemplary quality you know from those three characteristics or some other tangible you know, aspect to that piece that I want people to slow down and view. So you know, the awards for the pieces are very different. You know, each of the pieces that are on the wall, I feel they're on the wall because there's a lot of merit to them. You know? And the awards I am hoping are things to slow people down as they move through the show and have them linger because each of those pieces have some sort of exemplary characteristic. So for the best in show, uh, it hit all the judging criteria that I look for. And then there was another quality to it that I would maybe best say is like inevitability, you know? And meaning that once you see a piece, 
that is made in harmony with what the idea is behind it, where you couldn't see it being made in another way. It kind of takes a piece to a higher level for me. So it was not only great technically, had a really distinctive personal voice, you know, there was a creative concept behind it, but beyond those individual characteristics, there was a, you know, a quality of it being made in harmony with what it is. So the work that was submitted was all of really high quality, uh, both technically, conceptually, in terms of personal voice. I think that what made this show so successful was the diversity in you know, creative ideas out there. You know, that you know, there are some people that are very um, you know, polished in terms of the materials and other people who are um, like delving deep into conceptual or narrative themes. And you know, I was really impressed by you know, the diversity of the works. So I think the diversity of what's on the wall makes it really a strong show. There's never been more people creating in more ways with more resources. And I think Canton has done a great job in showing that they value that and creating a space and an opportunity for people to demonstrate you know, that attribute that defines the time that we live in, which is creativity. So congratulations to Canton for that. For me, artwork is about curiosity and creating meaningful experiences, you know, and that's something that I encourage in my students as well. But those meaningful experiences, if they only exist in your head, if they only exist in your heart, you know, it's an audience of one, you know. So, you know, whether someone submitted a piece and it didn't get on the wall, or if someone submitted a piece and it's on the wall but it doesn't have a ribbon on it, or if it hasn't won best of show, all of these pieces are important because they contribute to what it is to be human.